Welcome to the all new season four pitch off of Greenlight Maine. Over six episodes, you'll watch our 13 semifinalists give it all they've got to earn their spot in the Greenlight Grand Finale and compete for the $100,000 cash prize. Now, let's meet our panel of judges. CJ Kinney, MBA, President Kinney Consulting. Dimitri Markovich, Assistant Professor of Marketing at the Business School of the University of Maine, Orono. Deb Newman, President of the Bangor Regional Chamber of Commerce. Skip Bates, Senior Vice President of Main Street Banking for Bangor Savings Bank. Marge Barker, Chapter Chair of SCORE Bangor. Dr. Brian Walton, CEO of the Acadia Capital Management Opportunity Zone Fund will be our commentator this morning. And I'm your host, Julene Gervais. So let's get this pitch off started. This episode of Greenlight Maine is sponsored by Day's Jewelers, New England's family jeweler since 1914. I got kind of frustrated that there just really hasn't been any progress in terms of space exploration or development of rockets to do what I thought was supposed to happen when I was a kid. We're the first company to offer lower cost, environmentally sound, small satellites to be launched into low Earth orbit. Our rocket will literally fit into the back of a semi-truck. So just checking in with Brian here, our commentator and resident mentor. You know, some people watching at home might think this guy is crazy to think that he's going to launch rockets off the coast of Maine. But the fact that he moved his company here from Boston with his employees and his family means that he's serious. He is. He's committed. I'm very impressed with his commitment. And he's also in the process of raising $2 million, and that's not an easy feat. So he's got his roots here. He's ready to go with his business, and he's looking at the right grants. So he's looking at the MTI grants, you know, the Maine Technology Institute grants, but he should also look at some of the federal grants. Uh, there is the Small Business Innovation Research Grant uh, that NASA has. Lots of ways for him to get uh, 750 to $1 million in additional funding. Welcome to Greenlight Maine, Sasha Derry. We are so excited to hear about your company, Blue Shift Aerospace. Can't wait. So you may launch your presentation <laughs> whenever you're ready. The future of space exploration will have the words on it, made in Maine. I'm Sasha Derry. I'm the CEO of Blue Shift Aerospace. I'm also the CEO and co-founder of a successful 20-year-old renewable energy company, Alti. Blue Shift is a rocket company based out of the former Brunswick Naval Air Station. And we're developing a new line of rockets that will launch tiny satellites, similar to this one, up into space. It's a burgeoning new market that's expected to be over $60 billion over the course of the next decade. And we want to see a portion of that brought back here to Maine. Blue Shift's rocket innovation allows us to offer these launch services for these tiny satellites into space for nearly one half of the current competition. And this is thanks to uh, a simpler rocket design, which decreases the cost of manufacturing, machining, um, the plumbing, the electrical, and also a proprietary trade secreted uh, bio-derived high performance rocket fuel, which is less expensive than traditional rocket fuel. You know, from my perspective, one of the biggest advantages is actually the technology behind the biofuel. Uh, so having a, a clean source of rocket fuel, that's really the hook. Uh, there are a lot of companies out there that can build uh, composite structures for the rocket itself, but being able to license that fuel, that could be something that really takes the company far. It could be a completely separate revenue stream at some point. Last but not least, inherent in our rocket design, is a much higher level of safety, which decreases the cost for simple logistics, our research, our R&D, and importantly, the launch of the rocket. Because of our safety, we're able to reduce the cost of insurance, which is a significant factor of any launch of a rocket. The Blue Shift team consists of five individuals. Uh, we have uh, backgrounds in physics and engineering and professional experience ranging from aerospace engineering, uh, decades of business management, uh, mechanical, electrical, and software engineering. And it's jobs like these we want to bring back here to home to Maine. Our next steps are to launch a scaled down version of our rocket, uh, we're capable of carrying two satellites at once from paying customers. And once we've completed that successful launch, we, will, we plan on seeking additional funding from private investors and uh, the federal government, especially from NASA, 
and here in Maine, such as MTI, to scale up and build our full-size rocket, which is about 50 feet tall, uh, to launch up to 30 of these tiny satellites into space at once. The question for us here today is a decade from now. What do we want people to think of when they think of working in Maine? We have a, a great agricultural industry, aquaculture industry, a wonderful brewing industry. But a decade from now, we want them to think of Maine as a great place for high-tech jobs, like in aerospace. Let's make the future of space exploration made in Maine. Can you talk a little bit more about your decision to locate in Maine? And do you see Blue Shift being successful here over the, uh, the long term? Or is it a, a temporary state where you'll eventually have to move to Florida or Texas or someplace where the, the engineering uh, industry is stronger? Blue Shift uh, was started originally in Massachusetts. And thanks to an MTI grant and my own passion to get back to Maine, um, we were encouraged to come home to Maine. I now live uh, in Brunswick, Maine. Um, is it difficult to attract talent? I don't think so. Maine is a wonderful state to live in. It has a great reputation. I think we have the right things here at Maine. We just need to bring the ability to fund companies in high tech and to be sort of unafraid, unabashed about promoting high tech in Maine and that it's a good place to come and do business. First of all, thank you for coming back to sure. Maine. Yes. And being so creative in, in, in the idea of bringing rocket science to Maine, because I think that that's one of the areas that could be very lucrative here with mm. our, our wide open spaces. But what, what is your thinking? What do you think that will um, be the success, the ultimate success that you'll be able to make a check mark and say, we have met our goals? What is it that will help you to get that point? In the short term, in the next, what I hope to be 18 to 24 months, is to be able to fully employ the team of probably about eight to nine people that I need to get up on board full time and uh, the manufacturing of our scaled down version of rocket and the launch of that. Because I think by proving that we can launch this rocket, get it to space, bring it back down, we'll be able to seek out additional funds, not only from here in Maine, but other uh, angel investors and other sources of capital. So for us, the real key it isn't so much about, I know the people I want to hire and ramp up to full time. Right now I have people, some people are paying and some people are working volunteer. It's be able to get those resources to pay them so they can fully focus us on day after day for the next two years to ramp up to launch that rocket. Because well, that once we do that, I think we can build our full rocket and bring a significant amount of revenue to the state of Maine. You have applied for a NASA grant? Yes. You had through their small business program? Yeah, this BIR, yep. Yep, and so where are you in that process? We didn't, we didn't receive the last one, but we're planning to apply again. Okay, and you had the MTI grant uh, yes, that was did. helping you um, fund your application. Yeah, we've been very, MTI has been wonderful. Besides getting, being the catalyst that got us to Maine, um, it was wonderful from the standpoint that uh, it helped us pay for additional help to, to do these applications, to bring in what could be hundreds to millions of dollars from especially NASA. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, over the course of a year, they helped me fund the ability of optimizing our bio-derived fuel. So we were able to tweak it over and over and reformulate it to the point where we were actually able to increase the performance by, and this might be a little techno nerdy, but by 15 to 20%. So every little percent you can squeak out of performance of a rocket fuel is and really important about how much you can carry. And could you tell us a little bit about how your fuel is different from like what's going out of Cape Canaveral? Or so our fuel can be found in farms across America. It's, because it's, uh, a, it's bio derived? It's a bio derived fuel. It's environmentally safe. It's quite sustainable. And uh, you could literally eat it. I don't <laughs> recommend it. It might cause a little constipation. Is it corn? Can't tell you what it is. <laughs> Strawberries? <laughs> Blueberries, actually. No, it's not the first thing. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bio derived fuel. We actually mix a couple things together, and they're all bio derived. The fuel formulation is a solid fuel. And our type of rocket is a hybrid rocket, so you're, you're using the fuel as solid and the oxidizer as a liquid. And inherently, it's much safer than traditional rockets like out of Cape Canaveral, as we know and as we've seen a few explosions recently. We're, we're going to have to wrap up, but oh, can you briefly describe your revenue model? How, how would this company make money? Well, the way we make money is through the, these tiny satellite customers. And we'll probably be going through what are called launch brokers. You're familiar, familiar with like freight brokers for for, uh, for truck. Our model is to ramp up to the point where we can launch up to 30 satellites at a time 
with about $1.5 million in revenue per launch, we expect a, a net margin of close to 50% uh, for each launch. And we expect in the first year that we're able to launch six to seven of these rockets and our customers up in the space will pay it off our investment prior to this. What I liked about Sasha's pitch was the fact that he's bringing high tech, and I mean super high tech to Maine. Uh, Maine's not known for aerospace, but Sasha has a good program. He's got a uh, licensed and intellectual property that supports the innovation. And that's something that can really change the scope and face of what can be done here in Maine. So thank you, Sasha Derry, Blue Shift Aerospace. Great pitch. We appreciate, uh, appreciate you coming today. All right, wow. Yeah. Wow. I can't help that Elton John's Rocket Man is playing <laughs> in, in the background of my brain trying to process all of that. Uh, what are your thoughts? That's very spacey stuff. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> very cool. I'm, I'm impressed with the progress so far uh, where you take aerospace and you put it in the middle of Maine, nowhere, you know, from where it's traditionally based or where it might be easier to launch, as we were discussing before, like near the equator, um, and then does it up here and then has successfully gotten a grant and successful interest. Um, this is very development stage, though. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty. Early. Will they be early? Yes. Will they be able to bring this to market? And my concern also about the business model, they're going to be competing potentially against companies that have reusable technology, like Blue Origin, SpaceX who potentially have much lower costs. They have bigger rockets, but they could launch more satellites per rocket. So the overall cost per satellite could be lower. Something to establish. I was trying to put myself in the head of the, uh, the buyer and trying to think, what's the value proposition? Is it about the size of the rocket and his speed to, to market, how many of these he can do? Or does it have to do with the uh, environmental friendliness of the fuel? So mm. is it a rocket company or is it a fuel company? Mm. Right. Or, mm -hmm. you know, right. what's the strategic proposition yeah. there? One of the first things he talked about was the composition of the team. Mm -hmm. And team is everything mm -hmm. uh, if you're trying to grow, uh, especially an innovative company where there's a lot of R&D and you're, you're trying to take it to commercialization. So I was very impressed with that. I am concerned about the dollars that will be required to really yeah. launch this. Yeah. Uh, it sounds substantial. Yeah. And, and is that... Is that capital available? Well, I think he's got a good story. And I think that story will bring angel investors to him once he has been able to resolve some of the areas that he needs to um, resolve. What better place than Brunswick to start something like this? Can you just imagine? Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be great. It'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. It's possible that this could be something that brings this capability to you know, a business. Yeah. You know, when was the last time we in our business plans thought, well, you know, if I could only launch a satellite, you know, that's, that's undoable for most of us, you know, most of businesses, most of people. But with somebody doing something like this, they're innovative, they're small. Um, I think it's possible that we could be looking at a way for people in Maine actually to do this, to have this technology in our backyard rather than just, you know, once again, not having access. As a marketer, I'm looking at it as, from a marketing impact standpoint, and I see the halo effect on, on business and the business community um, in Maine, which would be incredible. And I see an impact on our workforce, too, mm -hmm. because when you're, we're trying to attract new people and younger people to the state, uh, how cool is Maine? We're yeah. building rockets. We're, we're doing right? rockets right? now. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we have to wrap up with <laughs> yeah. that. Great, great comment. Yeah. Thank you. Great discussion. All right, so now we have Sasha coming off the stage. We're at the W.S. Emerson Wall. We're going to debrief. How do you think it went? I think we were, I was able to really communicate the key ideas of what we're doing, what we're up to, and what we hope to see here. I mean, we really hope that the, the, the future of aerospace isn't about just Cape Canaveral, but something like a Cape Cutler in Washington County, where we can launch these rockets from as well. All right, I know you're going to do it. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Great job. Good luck. All right, we've got to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Greenlight Maine. Don't go away. What strikes me most about Forevermark as a woman is the beauty of the diamond. When you place that Forevermark diamond on your finger, you can literally see it from across the room. It really has brilliance. I know when I show somebody a Forevermark that they're getting shown the best. 
you know that the color is always going to be in a range that's going to look beautiful and that you're never going to have a cut that's not going to explode light back at you. Make sure that my jewelry comes from days. Reaching new customers online is hard. You've tried Facebook, Google Ads, email. You even built a website 10 years ago. You're way too busy to focus on digital marketing and you're not getting results. At Dream Local Digital, that's what we do. We've helped businesses nationwide grow with online marketing. We're the experts. Let us help you. For almost 25 years, Maine Biz has been providing business news, information, and analysis for business owners and C-level executives in Maine, from Fort Kent to Kittery. Maine Biz serves the decision makers of Maine across multiple channels, including its flagship print digital publication, website, events, daily report, real estate insider, and weekly newsletter. Let Maine Biz help your business succeed. Inform, engage, connect. In 1972, Tom Moser committed his life's work to craft and four decades later employs 70 fine craftsmen and women in our shop in Auburn, Maine. With showrooms and customers from coast to coast and numerous awards and accolades, Tom has firmly established himself as an entrepreneurial tour de force and has proven that a life doing what you love is indeed possible. This year's winner of Greenlight Maine will win this handmade Thomas Moser beacon box and $100,000. For more information about the presenters and panelists on all the Greenlight Main shows, visit greenlightmain.com. I got into wildlife animal control four years ago, and I found a need to catch chipmunks and mice, and I came up with the inspiration of the traps. I don't have a better mousetrap, but I have a better mousetrap system. I just developed it into what it is today. Welcome. Dennis Terrio of Mouse Stopper. Thank you for joining us at uh, Greenlight, Maine. You may begin when you're ready. So basically, I came up with a better mousetrap system. Instead of taking a regular mousetrap, where you place the bait here, and you set it, the mouse can access this trap by all different sides. With my system, you take, it's a box, pretty much a container. Instead of putting the bait right here, you put the bait in the back, you set the trap, and you set it in there. The reason it works so great is now the only way that that mouse can get to the bait, he's got to step on the trigger. So, and it's also designed to go up against a wall. That's what this is, because mice tend to walk the walls. What's nice about it is you have two options. Once you catch a mouse or two mice, you can always just dump the mice out, throw the traps away, or you can dump the mice and the trap out, reset the traps, and reuse them. It also comes unbuilt, so it's easy for shipping. And it's sold with traps or without traps. You know, everybody's looking for an advantage in life. Well, this gives you an advantage over just a regular mouse trap. It's really effective, and it increases your catch rate. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. That's great. Um, may I ask, what made you uh, come up with this idea? What, what drove you there? Well, I, did, I do wildlife animal control, and I don't trap mice, but I trap a lot of chipmunks um, for people. And I found it hard just setting a regular rat trap for a chipmunk, because then they spring it, because they can access it by all different sizes. Sometimes they'll even eat the bait without even springing a trap. So I started playing around with different ways and uh, then I says, well, the chipmunk industry is not a big industry. So I just decided to go after the mouse industry because a lot of people have problems with mice. How did you test it? How did you, how did you know yours is the best? Did you well, uh, try this next to a more traditional trap? And so what I did was I actually got a big cardboard box and I actually caught some mice live and I dumped them in the box and I put a video camera on them and I watched mice eat my bait without springing a trap. I've actually seen a video of a mouse jumping over the other mouse to eat the bait. Oh. <laughs> but eventually, I caught him in the trap beside it. How long have you had this product on the market, and how many have you sold so far? Well, to tell you the truth, I've only put this on the market since 
January 19th, because I didn't want it on the market until I actually had a patent pending application filed. Some of the entrepreneurs on Greenlight Maine have obtained a patent uh, for their inventions, which is public disclosure of what's going on. Uh, but the patent process is usually a, at least a two-step process. First, you file a provisional patent application. That basically stops the clock, if you will. And it only costs a couple of hundred dollars, uh, if, if that, in order to get that filed. Then you have to file the full patent application. And that can be between thirty and $40,000. And I've probably sold just a little over 200 of these up till now. And what do you use? Amazon, eBay, you know, uh, word of mouth? I have not sold one on Amazon. Word of mouth and also putting my uh, Facebook ads on Facebook and stuff. That's where I've sold pretty much. Right now I'm working with a guy to beef up my Facebook ads and try to sell more on there. But I haven't sold any on Amazon and I have them on Amazon. Uh, why aren't they on. selling? Amazon's so big, I yeah. really don't know. I mean, they're price reasonable. They're, uh, I have them made in Maine, so that helps, but it's basically, I think it's just too big. If you type in mouse traps on Amazon, mine comes up eventually, but you gotta scroll down, it's not on the top. But you you're selling directly up. off your website. Yes, correct? I do. And I have to give you credit because I did, I did Facebook stalk you. Uh, and you really have a great Facebook page. Thank and you. I like that you're not just selling on the page, you're actually providing advice. Uh, so yes. you're building your credibility as an expert uh, in animal. Yes, animal control. Uh, animal control, thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's well, great, it's a great page. As a matter of fact, I just made a video on how to uh, find ways mice are getting in your house. Because finding a hole where mice gets in is really hard to find because they can get in such a small hole. Now, one thing that dentists might consider is partnering with a landscaping company. Landscaping companies are always dealing with earth. They're dealing with uh, the ground around the house. They can also find entry points. Uh, so that type of collaboration as a package deal could be an added bonus for some homeowners and will help them establish a good client base. So now you would be getting $100,000. How would you apply that to your product? What would you do with it? Most of it, tell you the truth, would be advertising. You can have, uh, like I said last time, you can have the greatest product in the world, but if you can't get it out there, you ain't got nothing. Um, so most of it would be advertising. Um, if I, when I start selling a lot more of this, I'd like to expand my line to a uh, plastic one. I think some people might see more value in a plastic versus cardboard or, well, this is actually chip. I like, build I up like of the that. cardboard one. Yeah. How would you advertise? I would actually have to hire somebody that knows stuff about advertising. I, I don't know enough about it. I'd have to look for a professional and tell me which way you, to go. You know what, you need to be part of the brand. Yeah. You really need to be part of the brand um, because you, you have a story, uh, you're engaging, it's great to hear from you and, and have you talk about this and you just have uh, you know, bring uh, some authenticity yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. I have just, to face somebody said Exactly. That. Um, so keep that in mind as you go forward with branding and marketing. Yeah. Is, is you could sell the whole, the whole package of, of yourself and your story and this product, and you, you'll have a winner. Dennis, what, what's your markup? These things only cost me like 38 cents to make, and I'm selling it for $2.59. That's good. So I've got a good markup. Um, my traps. I can buy a pack of these for 98 cents. Wow. So when I sell a trap with a box, I've actually selling them for 379. I've added $1.20 on them. Great. Well, Dennis, thank you for introducing us to a better uh, mouse trapping system. Yeah. Thank you much. Thank you. Well done. Glad, glad you guys <laughs> took me here. He has an old house. He needs these. Yeah. <laughs> OK, guys, what do you think? Is it a better mouse trap? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I loved it. I, I, I enjoyed how he talked about um, all of the, the testing and the research he did to develop this product and the video and watching. Now, he's an expert on mice behavior. Well, that yeah. guy knows his critters. Yeah, absolutely. He does. He and, needs and his did, own reality show. And did you know, he's, did you see this, that he's actually on 13 Taxidermy Lane? <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I think, you know, he lives and breathes it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, only, only the good mice come from. I love how simple this is and how practical it is, how cheap to produce it. And, you know, with the right marketing approach, if he can, you know, it'll, it'll catch on.
Oh, oh. oh. And he'll have a tale to tell. <laughs> oh. We're here all day. And I, you know, and I also re it's respect. It's not a bait and switch kind <laughs> of thing either. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I'm, I'm also impressed with his, um, his business acumen. That he is, he's got a patent pending on this yep. because and that's the, always a concern. He's applied yeah. for yeah. a, yeah. a registered can steal trademark. The idea and knock it off. So he really uh, put a lot of thought into uh, ensuring that this was protected before he starts yep. marketing it in a big way. It, it could be sold through something like Home Shopping Network or QVC. Oh, yeah. 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 Scalability, it, it's, it's huge. It's almost like to, at, at some level an impulse purchase. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you, you think of it in economic terms and it's, um, uh, it's a one-person operation. So well, the could. impact on, on Maine um, oh, yeah. There's would appear very to little be very minimal. Value. Right. I think right. licensing would be perfect for this. Right. I do, because otherwise it does stay like literally a cottage industry. You know, he's buying this, buying this, and mm. he's packaging it up, and it's off on Etsy or Amazon or something. Right. But licensing, on the other hand, especially because he has gone and uh, gotten or is getting a patent and a registered trademark, that puts him in good stead for licensing. Yeah. And I think that's something he should look at. Mm. That's an idea. Yep. I thought of that. I think there's a lot of potential here. Yeah, I, do I do too. I do too. And, and I just, you know, as someone who doesn't like dead mice, <laughs> I like the option that I can just toss it. I don't like to touch the mice. I don't. Reaching new customers online is hard. You've tried Facebook, Google Ads, email. You even built a website 10 years ago. You're way too busy to focus on digital marketing, and you're not getting results. At Dream Local Digital, that's what we do. We've helped businesses nationwide grow with online marketing. We're the experts. Let us help you. We're very proud of the product we make and the way that we make it. The most important features of our original dog vest are in its design. Traditional lenders, you know, they steer away from unproven track records. Can you come? Hold up. CEI gave us the opportunity to build a track record, show that our future path will be more solid than our past. What strikes me most about Forevermark as a woman is the beauty of the diamond. When you place that Forevermark diamond on your finger, you can literally see it from across the room. It really has brilliance. I know when I show somebody a forever mark that they're getting shown the best. You know that the color is always going to be in a range that's going to look beautiful and that you're never going to have a cut that's not going to explode light back at you. Make sure that my jewelry comes from day. After intense deliberation, our judges have tabulated their individual scores and today's competitors are still in the running to make the final three. This means they may compete for the $100,000 in cash. Join us next week to see more inspiring Maine entrepreneurs. Greenlight Maine would not be possible without the support of all of our corporate sponsors. Thank you. Greenlight Maine has been a paid-for presentation by the Portland Media Group.